Well, this is the sun yesterday on May 4th in the uh, near the end of the day, actually. And we're going to also see it on the horizon. When I film it, which is rare down on the horizon, I actually had to leave home to go do this. I can see, um, everyone sees an orange sun and it's also really cool and nice to see the flares with the orange sun. Right, so the sun is... Um, acting up a couple of X, well, one X flare anyways, but it was on the East Limb a couple of days ago with some M solar flares, one M solar flare, actually, sorry, one X, one M. But again, uh, even the X, there was no danger. I, they don't think it caused a coronal mass ejection. That scares me when I hear them say that. They don't think that it caused a coronal mass ejection. I think they would know the equipment that they have. If I was able to catch one without even a proper solar filter, it's because they're catching some some good shit, <laughs> definitely. Do you see how high that sunspot is pushing out, rising up that plasma cloud right out of the center of it? Now, what we're gonna see in this video is a new device that I bought, and with a new device, yes, that's right, we're gonna be able to see these objects uh, really closely. But anyways, I'll get into that. Um, a bit further down. I want you to see yesterday's sun and uh, we're approaching close to where the sunset was also. But first, just take a look at how it is. So that's uh, several spots. Like each sunspot has several spots. And on any given day, well, there's several uh, sunspots, up to 100, maybe even more. Like that area right there in the center, 3004, I think it is, has several sunspots and it looks like they're going to merge and make a, a long line and just that would be um half the size of the carrington event almost so now i'm sort of wondering if i told you guys this was april at the beginning of the video i hope not it takes me a long time to change the month so yeah may 4th is what we're looking at and not april 4th if that's what i said at the beginning of the video no time to back up this is a long video and i got lots to show you got to look at the new device that we just got I mentioned there was a new device on this channel and I, uh, the subs sputtered, even though we know it's uh, the same idiots doing the up and down of the subs, it doesn't really matter, but I'm affecting a lot of people um, with what I'm doing and there's a lot of shit happening on this channel and it's always hard for me to be able to have views and to have people come here. So buying bigger devices and uh, updating always costs um, you know, a lot, these uh, incredible devices. So if you're coming here to the channel, viewing the channel and all the help that I'm getting, thank you so very much. This is uh, the orange sun. You saw how red it was. There's no saturation here. Actually, when you film the sun going down the horizon, you tend to even want to bring that saturation down just a touch so it doesn't get any refraction. It's red as hell. And that's what we'll be um, seeing with the new device. We'll be, I'll talk about it later. I'm not supposed to reveal the end of the video, Bruce. Are you that excited? I am definitely excited. There are certain days that the sun is not viewable even when it's sunny. Did you know that? This in particular, well, okay a little bit of cloud, but it's a beautiful day overall. You can see the sunspots very well. Today, I went outside to uh, get um, the sun, as you're gonna see right after this, and I'm only gonna show you a minute or two. We're almost there. Um, so look, this is the fourth yesterday. Now look today on the fifth, how unclear it is, and yet there's no clouds today. Well, it looks okay like that. Wait till we zoom in. You'll see what I mean. And again, we only see that when I add that filter. Well, there's a reason for filters and there's also a reason for the exposure in an image. And it's not for nothing that when you buy solar paper, it blocks out 99.99% uh, .99 of the light, like the hydrogen alpha filter paper. But I was supposed to put um, hydrogen alpha filter on the end of my telescope and it turns out it's not gonna be clear enough. So I got even better. And that's what I'll let you know. So May 5th, you can see, sure, it's clear like that, right? But once we zoom in to the surface, which you're going to see right here, look at that, crap. You can't see it because there's lots going on. There's <laughs> a lot of um, uh, dust, hazes, and smoke. So should I say like on the moon? No, get people mad. The sun's not on fire, it's fusioning. Well, it's actually, uh, fusion is a freaking fire. I mean, duh, that's how it is. But you see how badly we see it? That's, there's sun days that are, are hard to view. And with the new device that I got, a day like that would be. Hi, welcome, thanks members. A lot going on this week. Some 
new things coming to the channel. I bought another device and I want to come on and share it with you all before I give it a try. So I got back from Montreal and I started setting up. This is the dovetail, which is going to hold the device that I bought. I have the same thing on the other side of the telescope underneath, which sits on my equatorial tripod. So I bought the dovetail. I'm installing it on top is that's what's going to hold the other device that I bought that you're going to see in this video that I'm going to reveal, which I'm hopefully sure <laughs> you guys and gals are going to be happy about it. This is not from the fundraiser. It's money I was saving up that I invested myself to be able to get um, the new device. And I got some help this week from all of you. Gratefully appreciated. And I jumped on the occasion to go and get the new update, which again, you are all going to be very happy about. So we got this dovetail and that's all installed. Um, at the back of the device, I'm going to put the Nikon D850 because it's going to overpower, overreach that object. It's just going to push the hell out of the device that I bought to be able to get spectacular images. Can you guess what it is that I bought? Can you guess which celestial object we'll be filming? It will be the sun. And that's what we'll be filming in a very different way with the Nikon D850, which of course is uh, pushing megapixels at, up its ass of the device that I'm going to get. So it'll be sitting on top of this. Instead of uh, wasting money and getting another expensive camera, I'm going to be able to alternate them because I went and got the extensions to be able to use them. So the dovetail's on. I'm waiting for two screws to put the telescope on this little black device, y'all, so that we can be able to go outside and see the sun. I think you're uh, getting an idea now of what maybe, just maybe, what I could have bought. And the amazing support that I have here, even though we are a small bunch, the channel is continually attacked. I'm the only channel I've ever seen buy an object, an expensive object, which was in the four digits, by the way, and lose subs. <laughs> well, we're going scuba diving, guys. I found an ancient city, and this is my scuba gear. I'll get into it right away. No, I'm kidding. It would not be cool. Wouldn't that have been cool? Well, I think something even better. We're going to get a solar telescope, and that's what I got, the solar telescope. We're going, I'm going to test with this one. We will be growing in size, that's for sure. Looking at some other equipment, I got informed to do some hydrogen alpha film viewing. So we're going to be doing this. Um, the auction goes in there. You take the... Um, the top off and let the oxygen enter, three PSI. It's like 500 below sea level or 10,000 above sea level. It's going to give us, um, what am I talking about, you say? Well, if you want to be able to see <laughs> the sun, the chromosphere, and the light that our eyes can't see, it's in the 656.28 nanometers, which is the hydrogen alpha spectrum, if you want to do some research on that spectrum. Um, scientists and NASA and the big equipment use um, arsenic, carbon dioxide, uh, air pressure. Um, in a vacuum is another thing, and I will be adjusting this too, to be able to see even better in a vacuum. And that's why the pressurizing is all done. It's the pressure tuning. I'll explain that as we go ahead throughout the, um, the experimentation and filming. And I'll get the first videos up on the members to see what they think. I don't even know if I'm going to be able to get the sun right. But we're going to be able to see the chromosphere. Um, to see different gases, we can also see nebulae with hydrogen alpha spectrum. And um, that means that they, if they put arsenic in there to see different kinds of clouds that are around certain stars, they use different products. They close it up in a vacuum to be able to um, get an even better view. So I will be turning this clockwise to um, pressure to tune it to be able to expose the solar flares, CMEs. We'll be looking at conjunctions. You guys, do you have any idea how much fun and how interesting it's going to be? It's going to be a learning experience for both you guys and I. Definitely, we're all going to learn together. Made in U.S., right? So I may as well buy some U.S. products before <laughs> USA disappears. It's uh, up in the four digits, almost almost $2,000 actually. And of course, some parts that I bought did come up to basically that, but it'll be well worth it. So imagine this object sitting on top of my telescope on the dovetail, and I'm waiting for two screws from Montreal. Almost got screwed there. <laughs> waiting for two screws. I've never been 
so excited about the idea of two screws coming to my house. So I've been waiting for a screw all week. I know it sounds bad, but we're going to have a lot of fun. And I, this is not the fundraiser money. So of course it's an investment. And with the help that I got this week, uh, you must put money aside. This is my goal here is to make an incredible channel. And then I intend on doing this full time, whether there be people that support me or not. We know in the near future, I'll have a website and whatnot, and uh, there's nothing that's going to stop um, I and you from being able to view um, everything that we'll be getting on the sun. We'll be looking at the chromosphere of the sun in 655.28 nanometers. So the more pressure I give this object, the nanometers will rise. So I could actually go up over and out of the, um, the hydra, um, hydrogen alpha range, and then I would lose the image or uh, not, the sun's always in the telescope. It's the solar flaring around it, uh, prominences that we'll be seeing. We'll be seeing conjunctions, eclipses. I'm gonna get it all. So the setup is worth a couple of thousands more. And each time I want to go up 50 to 100 millimeters, y'all, we're going to pay thousands of dollars. These objects, these devices are incredibly, incredibly expensive. They know you want bigger, they'll charge you. But what it gives us, what it shows us is it's going to be absolutely incredible. So what you're seeing me doing here is panicking because the two final screws do not fit. They're on their way from Montreal, and it's sunny, and the sun's exploding. <laughs> so talk to your friends about it. This channel has a large 14-inch telescope, the most up-to-date camera. It's top, top of the line right now, 46 megapixels, the D850 from Nikon. There's the Sony 60 megapixels. I'm looking into other cameras for sure, and I will update only bigger when I do update or the same. So let's talk about what the H-alpha spectrum really is. The H-alpha spectrum is a specific deep red visible spectral line in the Balmer series with a wavelength of 656.28 nanometers. That's with the air that I'll be inserting with um, a vacuum inside of a vacuum which I will adjust this at one point 656.46 nanometers and that 0.18 that you get more will be the difference of the clarity that you will see um, of all um, that the sun will show us and with what I put up its ass the Nikon D850 do your own research look it up online we're going to see superb images they recommended me to get one okay and i told them i have a 14 big tripod and i have it already at home so they said you don't even need a bigger telescope they suggested this size and they say you'll be surprised at what you'll see so since i'm able to push it sometimes and do some really good astrophotography and editing let's hope it really gives us what we want to see and i know it will Thanks for the generous donations, guys, on the thanks, the super thanks button now. And Leon Sykes, or Seeks, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. It's all thanks to you and those of you who do come quite simply to this channel to view the videos that will help me permit to get better equipment and to grow as a channel. Please spread the word. It's important. We have amazing, beautiful equipment and tools here, thousands of astronomy channels, and uh, nobody's speaking to us. Let's... Let's make a big stink. Let's get this out so that other people will see exactly what I'm doing here. Thank you for your help, everyone. I don't think most of you have any idea what we're going to be able to do, but you know what? I better shut up and wait till I get the two screws and to see if I can even see or find the sun. I'm pretty sure I will. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Thanks.